Fresnel's biprism. This is a Fresnel's biprism which consists of two prisms of very small refracting angles uh, joined base to base. That is the very small refracting angle is 0.5 degree here and 0.5 degree here. Okay, that is almost 30 minute. When it joins here will be a biggest angle that is 179 degree. Th thus a biprism consists of two prisms of very small refracting angles joined base to base that is here. We, uh, 0.5 degree and here 0.5 degree and here the obtuse angle 179 degree. As we all know the obtuse angle exists between 90 to 180 and the acute angle exists between 0 to 90 and the side angle is represented as 0.5 degree. Now we can go through the manufacturing of biprism. This is one of the glass plate and is uh, uh, polished from the to form a biprism that is a, a glass plate keeping its center point its two sides are polishing sharply to make a biprism okay you can see in the next that is this is the image of a biprism that is one of the faces of thin glass substrate is ground and the polished to form a biprism this is the image of a biprism it is very small side angle and having a obtuse angle Now as we all know when the light incident on an ordinary prism the ray is bent through an angle called angle of deviation okay that is this is the source of light and the ray is incident like this it has been refracting through this point. So this refracted ray we can imagine as this is emerging or originating from a virtual source S prime. Then the angle made between S prime and S is known as angle of deviation. Using this theory, we can explain the theory of Fresnel biprism. That is, the ray is bent through an angle called angle of deviation and the ray emerging out of the prism appears to have originated from a virtual source S prime. That is, we have already discussed. Now, a biprism produces two virtual sources such as S1, S2. That is, two prisms are joined. Here, the monochromatic source of light the light is refracting from the upper prism like this and the source will be S1. And the lower prism, the source of light is incidenting like this and it is refracting and the uh, virtual source corresponding to this refracted ray is S2. So, S1 and S2 are the virtual sources produced from the monochromatic source S. The experimental arrangement of Fresnel biprism. Okay. This is a Fresnel biprism and a monochromatic source of light is placed here. Uh, the upper portion of a prism and the lower portion of a prism uh, refracted the lights in a different way. And when the upper portion of a prism, uh, the light is incident from the monochromatic source, it is reflecting in such a way that that is E to B, E to B. And in the lower portion of the prism, the light is refracting such as A to F. Now, once again I am repeating, a monochromatic source of light is placed in front of a prism and uh, in the back side, there is a screen arranged to get the image or interference pattern and an eyepiece can be placed here to observe the interference pattern. So, D is the distance between two virtual sources, capital D is the distance between the screen and the source and Theta is the angle of inclination. Okay. Now we can go through S, the monochromatic source of light which is incident on the upper part of the uh, white prism reflects in such a way that is E to B. That can be considered as these light rays are originating from the virtual source S1. Now, the lower portion, the light incident on the biprism reflects in such a way that AF in this, the light rays A to F can be appears as it is originated from the visual source S2. So, we know the distance between the source and the prism is small a. And the prism and the screen is B 
and the distance between source and the screen is capital D and the two virtual sources which are coherent which, uh, since it are produced from the monochromatic source S are having a distance D. The biprism is fixed on an optical bench which is the basic uh, uh, arrangement to do such an experiment and a monochromatic source of light illuminates a vertical slit S. The virtual sources S1 and S2 are coherent and the indifference pattern can be produced on the screen. The indifference pattern will be from E to F as there is the uh, superposing of refracted waves occurs from the region which is not shaded. And a micrometer eyepiece can be placed here to observe the fringes. Then the theory about the frontal biprism that is the point O is at equal distances from the source S1 and S2. So here the S1 and S2 is having a displacement or distance D. Here we can represent E O as D by 2 and O F as D by 2. The point O is at equal distances from S1 and S2 and the central bright fringe is formed at O. The indifference fringes are forming like this. Uh, the central bright fringe occurs at the point O and the other fringes both sides of O alternate bright and dark fringes are formed here in between E to F area. So, this is the frontal biprism arrangement in which the monochromatic source of light S is used through a narrow slit and it is passed through the frontal biprism and it is focused to the refracted images are focused to a screen which is placed at a particular position behind the prism and uh, the indifference pattern is observed here uh, an eyepiece can be placed to uh, observe this indifference pattern the center bright fringe occurs at O. And one more thing to remind is the S1, S2 sources are coherent sources as the, those two sources are happening or as a part of a same monochromatic source S which is placed uh, passing through a narrow slit. Now we can observe how the measurement of beta D and D can be made. Okay, the adjustments can be made as a narrow slit by prism and a micrometer are fixed at same height in a straight line and the by prism is adjusted to get two equally bright vertical slit images. Now we can adjust the eyepiece then the clear fringes can be obtained on the screen which you have placed and uh, instead of the screen we can place an eyepiece uh, to observe the images. Now the vertical cross wire of the eyepiece can be adjusted uh, and it can be made to coincide with the one of the bright fringes. Okay. Then the reading of the micrometer is noted as X0 and the eyepiece is moved slowly by counting the number of bright fringes N. The micrometer reading is noted as noted again at the nth bright fringe as Xn. From this beta can be obtained as Xn minus X0 by N. Once again X0 is the reading that which we had taken at the first fringe we are considering and now count down to n fringes after that take again the micrometer reading that is xn then xn minus x0 by n gives the beta which is the fringe width that is the determination of beta. Now we can determine the d. Now an arrow slit is placed here and the biprism is arranged and a lens is to be placed here and this is the position of our eyepiece. Okay. All these arrangements are placed on an optical bench. Now the convex lens of short focal length is placed between the slit and eyepiece without disturbing their positions. Okay. This is the convex lens which is placed between the slit and eyepiece. Now we have to do with the two cases. This is the case 1. This is the position for case 1 and this is the position for case 2. Okay. Now first you consider this position the lens is at this position the virtual sources are here and the original monochromatic source is here and the screen is here and the eyepiece is producing. 
Then a lens sees moved back and forth near the bite prism till a sharp pair of images of slit is obtained on the screen. That is, it is placed here and the images are produced in such a way that S1 prime from S1 and the second image S2 to S2 prime. Now, we look one more thing. D is the distance between S1 and S2 and D1 is the distance between S1 prime and S2 prime. Okay. Now, according to this relation, as the D is smaller, this point we can consider as U according to geometry relation and this is the highest value will be considered as V that is according to geometry which is comparing to D1. Okay, so S1, S2 when the case 1 lens is nearer to the source, it will be producing S1 prime to S2 prime pair of images on the eyepiece or screen. D is the distance between S1 and S2, D1 is the distance between the images and the magnification produced can be obtained as D1 by D, that is D1 by D. By geometry we can relate this as D1 by D is equal to V by U which is given as equation number 1. Now this is the case 2 that is the lens is placed in this position, okay. In this position which is little far from the source and nearer to screen or eyepiece. Here also the light from the virtual sources S1 and S2 incident on the lens and it is refracting in this direction that is from S2 to S2 prime from S1 to S1 prime okay S1 double prime and S2 double prime and the distance between these two points can be considered as D2 as it is case 2 and here the S1 and S2 having the distance D. So, according to the geometry we can relate here that is D2 is the distance between images the magnification D2 by D can be related as D2 is the smallest one so U is the smallest one D is the highest one so we here we can relate with the D. So, D2 by D according to geometry we can relate here as U by V. Okay, this is given as equation number 2 figure using the optical bench we can find out the distance between S1, S2 that is the monochromatic source and the screen as capital D by simple measuring using. So, we are got calculations such as beta D and capital D. So, lambda can be obtained using the equation which we have derived ok that is beta is equal to lambda D by D from that lambda can be calculated. This is the frontal bright prism that is experimental setup using optical bench and the methods of measuring beta small d and capital D also hereby explained. Okay, thank you.